I made it minutes after we hung up that podcast yesterday. Mm -hmm. Found my Raspberry Pi. Right. Plugged that son of a in. Got it all <laughs> set up, sorted. Um, yeah. Configured. I don't have one here, and I spent time researching this. You can't buy these things anymore. Like, oh, they're really? just gone. I'll sell you mine. A thousand bucks. <laughs> Pre-configured. Well, well, continue, because you, you might have given me the, the deal breaker. Uh, so it's not hard to set up but mm -hmm. it's not like if if installing chrome is a challenge for you this might not be your thing um, <laughs> i mean because it okay. it ta well first off there's a couple challenges the, the primary challenge well there were two challenges i had the, the primary mm -hmm. challenge i had actually I should probably take a step back what you do is you have to have a raspberry pi you connect it into your network you point right. your I, in my case i point pointed my router at the DNS. at the yeah the DNS at the Raspberry Pi and then it effectively f creates a firewall but it filters out all. So there must be DNS services on the internet that just yeah. do this. Right? Well, you get lists. It, the way it works is that people have curated uh, yeah. like block lists, and so you can just you can grab those or you can integrate your own, and then it blocks out the majority of the crap. Yeah, and it works. So far. It is, uh, I mean, this, I didn't have to do anything for this call or anything like that. Just kind of worked. And it, it makes I like that you have something that is effectively a Commodore 64 between every device in your house yeah. and the internet. Yeah, it's a pretty much it. <laughs> uh, so there were, uh, no, I mean, I like it because I would like to do it. I have, so you, uh, you texted me yesterday and you said, hey, that, blah, blah, whatever you said. And then, but one of the things is, um, it has like a web inter, you have, you yeah, know, like it has a web interface. So I have the Google Wi Fi thing, which of course uses a mobile app. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that you can, can – can I even change the DNS? You should probably. be able to. Yeah, probably. I so there's – for it. those who – there were two challenges with this. The first off is the way you – the memory on the Raspberry Pi is a micro SD card is the way it works. Uh, finding a micro SD card reader in my house was actually quite difficult. Um, so what I had to do was I found yeah. – I think it was a Surface Pro 6 – Mm -hmm. Or five because it has that. Actually, still has the SD. Well, is it micro SD? Yeah, I guess it is micro. Yeah, it's micro the, SD on the back, and so I was able to yeah. to load it up. And you, there's millions of tutorials. So that was challenge one: finding something like that. <laughs> and the second one was uh, to Paul's point: you have to reroute your DNS server or your so. points, I should say, and Amplify HD, which I love the product. The web interface is garbage, and so you have to do it through the mobile app, which it's not terrible, but it, it's a little bit more cumbersome than being able to just do it all on your PC. But then you just plug it into your switch or your whatever router, and uh, away you go, and it just kind of starts working. And then it, it gives you nice stats that about 10% of all of my web traffic, Paul Throt, is ad or tracking oh, yeah. and all other sorts of stuff. So I, I guess I can. I can edit the DNS. I know you were mm -hmm. hanging on that. Um Hmm. Okay. Well, so, I don't know. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, every morning I have this uh, upsetting moment, you know, when I'm reading and, you know, I click on a news thing. I want to read it opens in the in app browser, which has no way of blocking anything. And it's just, pop, 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 you know, mm -hmm. it's just not good. So anyways, I like it. I'm glad, I'm I'm like, it. I like that you did this. Yeah. Uh, Front to back, how long would you say? You it took me longer time. than I'd probably like to admit, mostly because I well, had... Well, because you had to find SD cards. I, yeah, I mean, it probably took me maybe two hours off and on doing yeah. this because I was doing it. I did it, like, I started when I was eating lunch. I was like, ah, let's just get mm -hmm. this set up. And then trying to get the router figured out. Uh, oh, the other challenge, too, which this is the one I left off. It was actually harder than anything else. was actually assigning mm -hmm. a static IP address to the to hardware. The yeah, because you don't want that changing, and so yeah, doing that through a, yeah, the yeah. mobile interface was a little. It's a little odd how it was what set kind of, up. What do you have for? Uh, what's your router? It's Amplify. It's Ubiquity's consumers line. It's Amplify. I recommend it to anybody. I mean, like it's, this is a mesh system. Yeah, it's fantastic, but I got no. There's no the web interface yeah. is not great. Yeah. It's the the app interface is perfectly fine, but. It's kind of a pain in the butt when you're trying to copy an IP address or whatever from your PC and you got it on your phone. So, yep. whatever. I feel like if I knew I was going to be here for a long time, I'd probably be. I, I think I bet my network is Wi Fi 5. It's not even Wi Fi 6, right? Because it's the original. Not, but... Yeah. I mean, I would probably go to a 6 or 6 E network at this point. Um, and that would be like Eero or I don't know, whatever. It's one of those things. But 
but you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to ride this thing down like a comet heading for the Earth. Um, anyway, that's interesting. I'm glad you did it. I mm -hmm. yeah, I may still try. Well, I can't. I can't get a Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna look into. I did. I spent 30, 40 minutes looking for that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure there's like at least one model somewhere at some place online. You should check I Target. It's an unusual oh, place to find one, but yeah. that's. Yeah, yeah. You can get them there. At least you could. Right. So this thing just has to hang on your network. It doesn't matter where it is. Like it's just yeah. You just needs to be near the actual router because it's mean, just a DNS. So that makes but that makes me think there must be DNS out there that would just work without having to put the device there. Well, so I'm still using Google DNS. Yeah. But this device sits in between it, so my yeah my, yeah yeah it just okay. all right. it is right. is just filtering out specific IP addresses mm -hmm. that are just known to be whatever just trackers. So, yeah, so when you say Google DNS, that's something you configured at whenever you got this router because that's not the usual, right? Like it's not your ISP's DNS. Correct. It's, yeah, this is probably for speed reasons. Yeah. So probably for the speed of ad delivery reasons. Um, <laughs> that's what it's really for. But uh, yeah, okay. Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So it's not an actual. Mm. It's, it's it, think of it more as a probably a firewall is probably a better way to describe this thing. Yep. Than yep. an actual DNS server because it just sits in the middle, and technically you can do it over Wi-Fi if your Raspberry Pi supports Wi. I don't know. I would recommend doing that just because yeah. everything in I your think house. Plus, uh, I could be wrong, but I think only the very most recent one support even supports Wi-Fi yeah. on the on the board, right? Pretty sure. I think. But. Considering you can put it right next to the switch and like that, it doesn't need a head like you SSH into this thing and yep. tinker that yep. way. That's it. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, it was kind of cool. So now I'm Raspberry Pied. I don't know. No, I like it. I, 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 like I said, I, in a bizarre coincidence, I was looking at that probably sun, sometime Sunday, mm -hmm. mentioned it to Laurent yesterday morning, and then you just. <laughs> It's you know it's one of those coincidences that we always blame on Google except this time I don't think we can, you know. We're just connected uh, at the hip, Paul. Some weird way. Well, there's weird stuff like so. Uh, <clears throat> I just I just throw this out because I we uh, we as humans are designed to see these conspiracy these you know coincidences as purposeful events. My wife uh, interviews people like literally every single day for mm -hmm. health and fitness type stuff, and usually it's like doctors and nutritionists and people and like that, but. One of the people she interviewed about two weeks ago was this actor who had lost 125 pounds. He still weighs like 300 pounds. He's humongous. And um, she, you know, she mentioned it, and I said, I've never heard of this guy. And I looked him up online. I'm like, yeah, I've never, never heard of this mm -hmm. guy. And um, we were flipping, trying to find something to watch. And she's like, oh, hold on a second. She goes, back, <laughs> go back to the screen. She goes, that's the, the latest movie that that guy's in. That Then it was a picture of the guy in the little graphic, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. And then um, we were watching, what did we watch? I said, we were watching, uh, da, 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 uh, I can't remember if it was in the show or in something else, but we were watching The Dropout, which is the Elizabeth Holm things, thing. And um, somehow in the course of this, this guy came up again and the show that we just saw came up and she's like, there it, she's like, that's, there it is again. Like, how is that happening? And I'm like, can't blame Google for that one. I mean, it's, it's you know, but I mean, we, we all, we're always like, oh, Google, you know, Google mm -hmm. did it, you know? And uh, the pie hole thing is a really interesting example of that too. Like it's, it's you know, unless Google is hardwiring into our brains now, you know, plausible. What is the the dropout on? It is on Hulu. Okay, hopefully my wife. It's mostly one. good. It's it's you know uh, the story is fascinating to me because mm -hmm. it, it um it, it's just so common in tech. But unfortunately, in her case, this was like biotech or like. Uh, you know, health stuff. So like people were doing trials and this thing never worked. Like it never once worked ever. And, um, they just lied their way. They were hoping it would eventually work, you know, which is a fun thing to do when you're making a web browser, I guess. But when you're making like a <laughs> right. blood test, which is really serious and people mm -hmm. dying of cancer and stuff. Um, I mean, the fraud there is horrific. Um, so the story is interesting The the dramatization of it is, it's pretty good. It's a little, a little kitschy or whatever, but hmm. it's interesting. It's an interesting. If, if you don't, if you're not super familiar with the story, um, especially there's a lot more detail that comes out, maybe more than you need, honestly. Uh, but it's worth watching. Yeah, maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Either way, tomorrow we'll talk about the Windows event that's uh, later today. Yeah. So it's weird. Microsoft is.
promoting this as a Windows event, right? But really, I, I mean, hybrid work isn't just Windows. This right. is going to have to be like an all-up Microsoft 365 type thing. I also, you know, we'll see what they announce, but I think the fact that it's hybrid work mm -hmm. should be a, an indication of the types of features you're going to see. <laughs> You know, so if you're looking for the big bang, oh my God, Windows 11 V2 is going to be awesome. I mean, I'm not sure. You know, we'll see, but um, I'm not sure. It's hybrid. This is, it'll get hybrid. good gas mileage. <laughs> yes.